Hi everybody, Mark from Advanced Electronic. Okay, today we're going to be working on the Resonant Electromagnetic Power System by Don Smith. Um, I have figured out a few things here, and uh, basically what we have is... Oh, excuse my mess, by the way. My workbench is a disaster. Um, L1 is a neon sign transformer. We can't find the right neon sign transformer, so what I did get was a low glow. It's a 2004... Uh, neon uh, sign transformer for uh, cars doesn't have any protection on it which is fa fantastic I got it for 20 bucks off of eBay all right um, here's the thing uh, the voltage it doesn't really matter what the voltage is it says it's 9500 volts um, the problem I have is it's 333,333 Hertz that I have to create resonance with how to create resonance with the circuit is between these two items, between the NST and the capacitor and the resistor. Uh, Don Smith says that that uh, resistor, R1, uh, let's see what it says here. It says R1 is used to set the electron pump rate frequency of the capacitor. So, it, yes, we have to set the frequency of the capacitor, otherwise we won't have any resonant rise. How the circuit is supposedly working is this voltage, Going into this capacitor with the resistor across there is supposed to create the resonance, bring it, giving you a resonant rise and an ultimate efficiency. All right, this coil and transformer has nothing to do with resonance. We have an adjustment on R2 over here. R L2 and R2 together will give us the output frequency. So what we're going to be doing is I have a 480 volt. Uh, this is from old street lamps. I have a whole bunch of brand new uh, transformers anyway, if anybody's interested in buying. Um, they're uh, $175 each. Uh, anyway, um, the 480 volt on this side, we tested it with my inductance meter. Ends up being 2.6 Henry's, which uh, he gives us the formula for time is um, uh, inductance divided by resistance. So if I take the inductance and divide it by 43 ohms, I get 60 hertz. That's uh, the correction there. So I have that label documented. Now, what we need to do is I need to test the actual capacitance of this very large 1,200 volt uh, capacitor. Don uses an 8,000 microfarads capacitor. I'm not going to go so crazy to get 60 amps of output and kill myself here today. So I'm using an 88 uh, microfarads. Let me just make sure this is discharged. And what I'm going to do is... Uh, the circuit isn't connected to anything except for the neon sign transformer. So I'm going to go ahead and lift one of these connections first. Okay. So we can get it to stay out of there. And we're going to take our... Let's see, this is supposed to be 88 microfarads. i got to do this with one hand camera in one hand and uh oh by the way make sure your capacitors discharge before you blow up your meter um let's see what we got we actually have more than what we're supposed to have we have Saying between 90 and 93, so we're going to go halfway between there, 90 and 94. We're going to say it's 92 microfarads. It's kind of hard to tell when uh, it's running all over the place. So anyway, let's say 92 microfarads. And that'll give us, the formula is time equals R times C. So we know 92 microfarads, and we want the uh, frequency of my transformer. I tested, by the way, to do that. You power the transformer up into the uh, into a gas discharge tube. Um, doesn't matter what the voltage uh, is. I set it so we have 120 volts out. That's not going to be my method of limiting the voltage here. We're going to use a uh, varistor, as Don shows in his uh, diagram here, tied to ground. The only problem that I have is the neon sign transformer has two outputs. It has a uh, a positive and negative input which we're going to connect to the battery on the positive, we're going to end up putting a, a kickback diode between them. But they want to see the ground wire. It's going to go to the battery. I'm going to earth that ground wire. We don't have an earth anywhere else for the high voltage system on here because there isn't a center tap. 
So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to listen to him and we're going to uh, we're going to earth the input positive and negative. It's not shown to earth that, but I have no other place to earth. So we're going to earth that. Uh, G2 over here is a ground rod, and I have a very good ground rod in my backyard. It's not tied to any of the electrical system. The positive line, which is not tied, I'm sorry, which is, uh, yeah, which is not tied to the diode, goes to the varistor. He says use a 480 volt varistor. I have a small varistor, a bag of them, and they are, the clamp voltage is 700, and clamping voltage is 710 volts, and the uh, limit voltage is 430 volts, so we're going to go ahead and use that and see what happens. Um, so anyway, what we what we have to do now is we have to take uh, time equals. So we're going to have 333,333 kilohertz, and we're going to take that and divide that by the capacitance, which we know is 92 microfarads, and it'll give us what the resistor is supposed to be. Before I did that, and uh, it was related to 88 microfarads. So basically, that's the entire thing of how to, to make the circuit function. It's very simple. Once we get that uh, taken care of, what I did to figure out the, uh, uh, the, the frequency of this, I put the arc gap across there, and I took my... I'm going to do it again so you guys can see it. I have a, uh, a high-voltage probe on my uh, oscilloscope. I put on channel one, shut off channel two. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up the NST, and now it's it's operating right now. Oh, I have to put it on measure, and we have now. Let's give me. 28.57 kilohertz. So obviously it was lying to me before. It's between three different frequencies. Must be harmonics. And I have to set channel one. Make sure it's on 100. Yeah, it's on 100 times. Let's try this again. It's not working. I hope it didn't blow my probe up, my uh, scope up here. Let's see if this thing is running. Yes, it is. Oh boy, I hope I didn't ruin it. There we go. Click measure. Now we have three different frequencies running at 28.57 kilohertz. We're going to go at uh, 28.57. Okay. Shut this off. Shut up the scope. So now we're going to take 28.57 kilohertz, and we're going to divide that by the capacitance, and it'll give us the resistor we need to make this function. Thanks for watching.